Do you have the idea for a great podcast, but don't have the space or equipment to produce one? Don't wait another minute. Audio Bay Studios is the best place to produce and stream your podcast live. With 4K cameras, professional equipment and more, Audio Bay Podcasting Studio is the best place to showcase your great ideas. Call us today at 440-539-1150 for more information and to book your podcasting session with Audio Bay Podcasting Studio. Call today. Wow, dude. Kip Winger. Now it looks like Seth's uh, frozen and his mic is not on for some reason. And uh, just me. Well, hello, everyone. What would you think of that? Kip freaking winger, my old pal. And now I'm stuck here waiting for Seth to get back on. I'm assuming that he knows how to get himself back into this. But uh, if that wasn't exciting enough, having Kip winger on the Chris Aiken presents very shortly here, we are going to have from Tesla, the guitarist, Frank Hannon, yeah. And uh, are you back with us, Seth? Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened, man. All of a sudden, kicked me out of the studio. <laughs> Kip Winger turned you to stone? I don't know what happened there. But <laughs> just kicked me out of the studio. I was like, dear God, what the hell happened? But yeah, He was awesome, man. He's he a cool. very nice guy. Very uh, talented, uh, intellectual, yet friendly. Surprisingly friendly, right? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's done so much. I don't know how he's been doing it this long. And still has the passion and love for it. I mean, that's cool. That's what I like about that. You know, yeah, he well, it sounds like he's take his money and run. He, you know, he still loves everything he does. He, the guy loves a challenge for one, and you know, life is a challenge. But he's he's living it, and like he said, last man standing. You know what I mean? He's gonna he's gonna do this till the wheels fall off, as most of us are. That's all the bands that are on this cruise are that way. This is, we'll all do this till we die. We'll probably die on the freaking monsters rock cruise someday. Yeah, that, <laughs> they could do a burial at sea. He was talking about Alice Cooper. I remember back when I was doing rock radio, um, I got to meet Alice Cooper. He came up to the studio, whatever, and he was doing a show here. And um, so I hosted like a bus tour with him and they were driving everybody, the listeners and Alice down to the show. And, I was like sitting up front with him, just talking. And he's, I was like, "Dude, what'd you do today?" He's like, "I went to the mall." <laughs> I, was like, All right. <laughs> he's like, I was like, "Well, what'd you what'd you buy, man?" And he's like, "I bought some watches." He's like, thirty thousand dollars worth of watches. <laughs> and I just sat there like, "No shit." Alice Cooper went to the, the mall here in Cleveland to buy thirty thousand dollars worth of watches, and I just thought, yeah, "Life of a rock star, man." I mean, that's that's, wow. that's cool. I'm not a watch guy personally. Like I, last time I had a watch was in like junior high school. I had a, a swatch watch. You know what those yeah. are? Oh, of course. Swatch watch. Yeah. Swatch watch. <laughs> swatch watch. How old are you? You're 50, you said? Yeah, man. Can you believe it? I know I only look 25, but. You do. I mean, I'm 46. So, you know, we're. <laughs> and I look twice as old as you. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I believe me, I remember the swatch watch, but I, I can't believe how many women were texting in. Dude, that was insane. Because usually it's just like one guy. We have to yeah. keep like, we're like oh, we gotta put this. We only got one comment to put up from one guy. No, Today no. it was like I lost track. I don't have enough fingers to count all the ladies that popped yeah, on tonight. It was pretty impressive. That know. is. It's probably not going to stop either because we got another superstar coming on here soon. Yeah, Hopefully. he should be on any minute. Uh, yeah, if he didn't, yeah. If he didn't forget about us, I saw Tesla back well they were in cleveland just a, last this past year and september october someone's like had playing at the uh, casino here at the mgm and it was it was a great show i mean they did a hell of a hell of a job um but we uh, play shows with them i've i mean i've been on the same bills tesla plenty of times yeah. i think mean, i mean good guys good people oh hell yeah i mean jeff keith he's a blast I don't know if you've ever met these yeah. guys. Before. No, not not. I got, never got a chance to meet them. So. But what you see on stage with Jeff Keith, I mean, in my opinion, he's like that off stage too. You know, like he he never stops. Woo! Here, <laughs> wow! He never stops dancing, man. Uh, and he was he was. I remember him being super friendly. Uh, you know, as well as uh, Frank Hannon, I've met one time. It was. It's actually been a while. It's been a minute. Probably like. 
I want to say maybe eight years ago, uh, the NAM show, which is like the, the big trade show for yeah. musicians, musical gear and stuff like that. Uh, and they have a lot of rock stars that show up to that, that endorse certain brands and so forth. And I ran into him and I just had to come up and tell him, Hey man, just wanted you know I was a fan because uh, the, our, our audience would like to know the first arena band I've ever saw in concert was Tesla opening for Def Leppard. And nice. this been, God, I would imagine around 1987, maybe, or six. But uh, this would be for the Hysteria Tour, which this was the long-awaited Def yeah. Leppard. And what, yeah. what made this, this tour uh, extra special, besides that they had a big hiatus because Rick Allen had lost his arm during between pyromania and right. hysteria. So they had a pretty big break there. Like it might've been even like three or four years between the records. And they were, they were so huge after pyromania and it was really bad timing what happened, but then they had this like long awaited album hysteria and they had this new band. They were going to be taking out Tesla and the first single actually I had, I had heard already. It was little Susie. Are you familiar with that song? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, surprisingly, a lot of people might not know, and I sh should look up who the original was, but that's not their tune. It's actually uh, a cover song, but that was what put them on the map. Uh, little Susie. I'm going to put up original here so I could see what that artist was. I think it was from the UK. Uh, okay, yeah, it's a band called PhD. So, right. like, having a doctorate. Uh, right. PhD was the original band, and this was like an 80s pop song. It doesn't sound anything like Tesla's version. Tesla ended up doing, like, a full, awesome, you know, rock version. Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah, and we had, I had never heard the other, the PhD version of little Susie before that I had just heard it on rock radio, uh, followed up by on, um, headbangers ball. They were playing uh modern day cowboy, right? Which was like their heavy track, which in a way it was kind of also their wanted man in a way. It's like, it reminds me of rats wanted man a little bit, but, at the time when I was probably, you know, 15 years old, I just thought they were a great band. They were awesome. The whole album rocked, you know, my mom even loved Tesla. She was still not that old. Really. My mom was probably in her, you know, mid thirties, no late thirties, probably at the time. Uh, and so she still rocked out and Tesla was, you know, she took me, they actually, my parents took me to this concert. If you could believe that. Right. Yeah. Cause I was, what? No, right. you go ahead, sir. My wife and I, our song is Love Song. Now, I don't okay. know if it's actually a good love song when you listen to the words, but that was kind of like our song and our little thing that you know, we've had for now 18 Love years. Love will find a way. That one? I, I, yeah, I've been a big fan of, you know, there's for quite some time. And, you know, I hate to be fanboy here. I'm just, you know, but because I've done rock radio for, you know, I did rock radio for over a decade and I got to meet all these guys, you know, ACDC and all, you know, I've been in music videos with some of these people and it, it's right. fucking amazing still though today being able to talk to guys like you and, you know, Kip and you know, if Frank comes on, um, you know, it's cool for me to be able to talk to people that are, are doing it. And it's, it's the kind of lifestyle that people dream about. And, right. you know, it's a profession for you guys, but at the same time, <laughs> there's a lot of people that look to you guys as, man, that's the kind of stuff that I just I, I wish I would have picked up a guitar as a kid because it's cool and it's sure. And it's I think everybody fun. did pick up a guitar as a kid. It's just the ones that you know really wanted to stick with it. Or yeah, uh, because I'm glad I did stick with mm -hmm. it. To it took a long time though. Even I I was probably the same age as Kip. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I was 27 when I got the gig with Steven and, you know, before that it wasn't looking, my prospects weren't looking too great. You know, I didn't live in Los Angeles. I was from San Diego. I wasn't going to play the kind of music that my age group was playing, which was like basically blink 182 and these kind of pop punk 
bands or there was like a rap rock, you know, yeah. Limp Bizkit thing going on. And that just wasn't what I grew up on. That's not what I liked. I, I did like, it's not that I didn't like Limp Bizkit. I do like Limp Bizkit and I'd like, and I like corn too, but uh, I just, it, it wasn't my, my deal and rock music is what I always loved. And it was an awesome opportunity that Steven would call upon me you know, years later to join his band, but just like you, I would get starstruck all the time, all of a sudden being like thrown in with all these famous people. A uh, great example, the tour I was, I was talking about earlier with Kip for VH1. I mean, can you imagine being on a tour bus and you, you know, basically we have bunks on there. There's about 15 bunk beds and they're kind of like coffins. Have you ever been on a tour bus? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. These are really expensive, like million dollar prevost. Yeah. They're not the Greyhound. Yeah. Yeah. It's ain't a Greyhound, but there's, you know, <laughs> they, they have the bunks on there and, you know, I took this, you know, the first row of bunks, uh, I was like up top and like Don Dawkins was like right beneath me uh, on there. And you had Kip Winger, you had the entire firehouse band, you had red, red beach, uh, you had Stephen Piercy, uh, Frank Wilsey, who was our other uh, guitarist. And then you had Janie Lane just going nuts uh, out there. And things got like really hairy, you know, like in the beginning, Janie was uh, nice to me. But as he kind of fell off the wagon and things, things got yeah. nuts, like first they had a like a sober sponsor guy come out to kind of babysit him and that guy ended up partying within like a day or two and things just went to crap and he just got like progressively worse till it, it, it escalated to this one night. We, we, I don't even, Oh, I think we were in Washington DC or something and we needed to get up super early to go into a, uh, XM radio interview down in Manhattan which we would be going to the actual studios there. And you have to get up really early to go to this because you have to drive into the city and it's a whole thing. And we need to be there like at 6 a.m. So by like three, we had a bus call of like 3.30 or four in the morning or something like that. Well, out at dinner the night before, Janie comes up and tries to get Frankie and me to come out with him. And he has a glass of like Jack Daniels that he just like slams down. He's like, do this, take a shot. And like looking back, I, I don't know if this is for sure. And I know he's not around to ask him obviously, but I think he might've roofied me. Cause I, I drank that. And I remember I got like really messed up for not having drank all that much. Um, but, but we went out and I think to like a strip bar or something like that. And I, I was just like, because I'm pretty sure there was something in that drink. I just remember, clips of the night like we ended up somewhere and he had this he had an assistant and i shit you not the dude's name was waldo okay and he looked yeah. exactly like <laughs> you would think a waldo would look with the glasses and the and he and he was just like this kind of goofy assistant dude and he was out with us too and i remember i wasn't making any hardly money on this thing at all and i didn't even really want to go to this you know strip bar so i certainly wasn't going to be giving a lot of money at this thing and i remember I pulled out, like I handed this girl like a dollar bill or a couple like dollar bills. And at some point I remember she looked at it. She like, she like picked up the dollar bills and she's like, ugh, ugh. like she saw that it was only like a dollar. So she's like, ugh, the fuck out of here. <laughs> and like, and then I remember like, like, Oh, well, I gotta get out of here. And I remember like Waldo crawling and picking up the ones and, like, sticking them in his pocket <laughs> or something. Uh, but we ended up getting out of there and Janie somehow got mad at me. Like we were in the cab to leave and those guys were in the back and I sat in the front of the cab and um, the driver was a little like sketched out. He was reluctant to take us, but it was late and he could tell everybody was a mess and he's driving us. And all of a sudden Janie tries to like attack me from the back seat of this taxi cab. And that's the first time that I learned that taxis actually have a partition <laughs> right. that they can throw up to protect themselves. Thankfully, like he, shoo, shoo. and, um, I was like, Oh man, you should have done that a while ago. And I'm thinking, Oh great. Now we can enjoy the rest of the ride. Nope. The ta the cab driver's like, get the fuck out of my cab. And he like throws <laughs> us out in this like terrible part of town. And 
I was just thinking, oh my God, we're going to get robbed here. We're going to get mugged. What are we going to do? And I, I, I went, I saw a police car there and I was going to ask him where he thought we should go to catch a ride or whatever. But Janie, uh, freaked out that I did that. He was like, for whatever he had on him or whatever, he was worried that I was like attracting the police. I understand in retrospect why he thought that I didn't have anything on me. I was just worried for my life because of this neighborhood we got, uh, if I feel in retrospect, I feel dumb for having gone to cop. I should have just played it, played it cool. Cause there was plenty of cabs around there. We did end up getting into another cab. Uh, which I got stuck with the bill for, by the way. Of course. And not only did I get stuck with the bill, but then when Janie got out, he was like fully like came up to me. He's like, "Do we have a problem? You have a problem, huh?" And he's like way taller than me, by the way. I'm like five nine and three quarters. <laughs> it's like, Janie's like probably six five, six four. I, I remember uh, the night that he passed. I was at a charity event, and I was actually doing. Uh, with a, a friend of his, and his friend came backstage and said that you know the Janie had passed, and it was a hell of a night, man. I mean, he was a talented dude, and it, you know it was a, it was a, it was a shame, it right? Was- well, you know he had a lot going on. I don't I don't know in his personal life what he was dealing with, or if there was medications involved, or whatever. I mean, I think that anybody who who has multiple MTV hits and, you know, a platinum record should be grateful for that, you know? And it seemed like from what I could tell, he didn't like being the apple pie guy or whatever. And he kind of moped about it. And it, it doesn't take long when you, when you hit a peak like that, that people end up, you know, moving on, you're not going to stay at that peak forever you know, and, but once you get to his level, he could have had a career the rest of his life. He yeah, could have been yeah. to this day out playing the warrant songs, whether it was with warrant or not. Um, so it was a total waste. It was a waste of a talented, uh, dude. He, he was young. I don't even think he might've only been in his forties when that. Yeah. We got a uh, Frank Hannon on. So let me uh, take, a we do. Right. And I'll, uh, we'll be right back with uh, Frank Hannon. Hang on. Hey. 